So, uh, welcome. Um, I'll try and keep this fairly short. I don't think we'll use the full hour, but uh, hopefully we'll give you a, a flying entry into the uh, document for public comment. So the topic today is the Encounter-Based Imaging Workflow Profile, or EBIW. Um, and as Kinson said, this has been sort of a topic that's been stewing for, for uh, at least a few years. Um, some of the initiating work was done, as uh, Kinson said, in the Sim Hims uh, Enterprise Imaging Work Group. Um, and there were a number of white papers laying out some of the challenges and potential technical solutions in that space. Um, so there's already been a lot of contributions uh, from uh, Chris Roth, Don Cram, um, Alex Tobin, uh, David Clooney, Ken Persons. So uh, we actually had a lot of uh, good material to, to chew on when getting started on this profile, which will be addressing a portion of that big picture. Um, and then uh, Kinson coordinated a, a special interest group which a number of you have uh, participated in over the, the prior year and then for the uh, the rest of the work that we've been doing this year. So the first thing obviously then is what is encounter-based imaging? And so we're looking at this in the context of enterprise imaging and sort of the, the lion's share of enterprise imaging is what we would refer to as uh, order-based imaging. This is what's typically going on in the radiology and cardiology departments. It's using the CTs, the MRs, the, the PET systems and the like. But as sites started to come up with a strategy for uh, dealing with imaging at an enterprise level, another big chunk of the imaging is uh, what they've referred to as encounter-based imaging. And this is things that's being done with digital cameras, with point of care ultrasound, with smartphones, tablets and the like. And it's much more distributed. Um, this is image acquisition going on in dermatology, wound care, uh, in the ER, and you'll notice a lot of et ceteras. Um, this one is, is much less bounded. So we've sort of described uh, enterprise, or sorry, encounter-based imaging as imaging that's captured in the context of an encounter between a patient and a care provider. So this is typically done without an order. And in the case of an order, the order provides the context and the linking uh, for all of the data. Um, in this encounter-based image capture, it's the encounter itself that's the context for what's going on. So order-based imaging is relatively well managed in most hospitals, um, thanks to a lot of the work that's been done on DICOM storage, DICOM work lists, and then the IHE scheduled workflow profile, um, data management, workflow efficiency, throughput, turnaround time, uh, ability to search and access the data works pretty well. Uh, and a lot of what the white papers were getting into is that in the case of encounter-based imaging, um, not so much. So there's work to be done. So what's the key? Well, since it's no longer the mid-1960s and it's now the 20, late 2010s, um, the, the key is no longer plastics, uh, it's metadata. Um, you know, it gets into the issue of what's the difference between a JPEG and a medical document, um, which would probably be a good joke if I had a punchline for it. But um, the, the boring answer is good metadata, um, that yes, you've captured a picture, um, but when was it taken? Who's the patient? Why was this taken? Uh, what part of the patient am I looking at? Who's the doctor? What is this image for? Um, without the metadata, uh, you, you haven't really completed the task. So a lot of what was done in scheduled workflow was about uh, corralling all of the relevant metadata and trying to make it as efficient as possible, trying to get a lot of automation in there, trying to avoid manual data entry. So what do we need uh, for managing the images and making them readily findable and usable? Um, we've grouped things into four sort of clumps of metadata. Uh, the first is the, the metadata about the patient, uh, and this is your the typical thing to expect, uh, name, date of birth, age, IDs, other IDs. Uh, then there's the metadata about the encounter. So these images were captured as part of an encounter. What department was it? What was the specialty? Um, who was the physician involved? Uh, what was the date of admission? What was the reason for admission? The next layer below that is the metadata about the procedure itself. Uh, what imaging procedure was performed? What modality was used? Uh, what body part was imaged? Uh, what was the reason for the imaging? 
Um, and then in terms of identifiers, what's the accession number? Uh, we'll come back to that one a little bit later. Um, information about the device, the operator, the acquisition parameters. And then and finally, when you get right down to the, the sensors itself, you have your metadata about the pixels, uh, rows, columns, bit depth. Um, that part you typically have fairly well populated, but a lot of the rest is about turning a JPEG into a medical document. So what's the harm? It's like, gee, that's a lot of work. Well, when the acquisition is not integrated, complete, and consistent, it's going to negatively impact the quality and the efficiency of care. That the problems that were cited in the white papers and were brought forward by uh, a number of people who have been involved in the profile is that with a lot of the encounter-based imaging, it ends up buried in a paper record. You know, you have print out, you know, printed out pictures, or they get scanned into the EMR without the metadata. Um, so you don't really have a, a way to get a handle on them. Worse yet, um, you end up with uh, them all lumped into one folder, uh, the, the dreaded media tab. Um, and to be fair, it's not really the fault of the EMR uh, um, that they haven't been given anything useful to, to organize that tab with. So the goal here is to really tackle the image acquisition process and try and do a better job of collecting this metadata when things are being captured so that you do have something to differentiate the images to navigate them. Uh, similar problems are fragmenting the imaging record across departments, and this is one of the reasons why people are pushing for an enterprise imaging strategy. Uh, you don't want each department independently handling image sets and handling them differently, and um, it's very difficult for anybody to get access to any broad uh, medical imaging record for the patient. And that's within the hospital. Um, you know, if you're looking at sharing between affiliated hospitals, um, forget about it. You know, that if, if you don't have your own house in order, um, you're in no position to really be sharing with your colleagues. So the end result of all of this is the images are not readily available to the care team. Um, and if they're not readily available, they won't be used. Care teams are busy. They don't have time to go doing, you know, forensic searches to, to try and come up with uh, the relevant imaging. It has to be uh, ready at hand. And on top of that, we've also got costs in terms of, uh, you know, the awkward workflow and data capture means um, you lose time. There's lack of ability to do automation. So you're losing both time and data quality here. So if this is what things look like, um, this is what you're going to get. So the goals of the profile is we want to facilitate clinical use uh, primarily, but also recognizing that the metadata is what's going to drive potentially billing and analytics as well. So the, the goal here is to do this by uh, trying to ensure good, consistent metadata. Um, this is also what feeds into uh, later if you want to retrieve the images, if you want to link them to notes or reports, if you want to compare uh, current images with prior images, if you want to use this to drive decision support, uh, if you have hanging protocols, um, perhaps less used in encounter-based imaging than um, in uh, radiology and the like, but that, again, maybe just due to the fact that they haven't had good metadata. Um, I think there's certainly a possibility to do good hanging protocols in some of these other use cases. You just need to have consistent series names and procedure codes and the like in order to drive them. Uh, we want efficient workflow. We want to minimize the manual data entry. Um, that's both for speed and for quality. Uh, we want things moved around electronically. So. EBIW, because of all of those uh, et ceteras, uh, has a lot of different use cases. And since uh, we had a limited amount of time to address things in this cycle, um, we've chosen to focus our efforts this year on the point of care ultrasound. Um, it was something where you know, the, the devices already have a fair bit of uh, smarts enabled, and so we thought we would take that as our first step. Our intention is to uh, reapply for uh, additional committee work in the next cycle to start to look at the applications in dermatology, uh, in wound management, infectious diseases, et cetera. Um, so as you're reading through the public comment, you'll notice that everything in the document is currently focused very directly on point-of-care ultrasound. 
but there's a number of open issues listed to start imagining how this would or would not extend well into the area of digital cameras for some of these other uses and applications. So the, the basic concept here with the uh, efficient workflow is, you know, modality work lists, great. Um, it's been an enormous boon to order-based imaging. Um, not having people type things in at the, the point of acquisition means you've got much more reliable identifiers and metadata. So um, basically typing sucks. Um, and that we shouldn't punish the uh, point of care ultrasound users um, just because we don't have an order to drive the metadata. So a lot of what you'll see in the next page is to try and figure out how to get them uh, the metadata automatically. So in this example, we're going to look at the point of care ultrasound in the uh, emergency room. And we've introduced a couple of new concepts. One of them is the encounter manager um, that is going to be the source of this metadata. In the case of order-based imaging, you have a risk uh, where scheduling goes on. In the case of encounter-based imaging, uh, our, our premise is that the physician is interacting with some part of the electronic infrastructure, and we're going to call that the encounter manager. Typically, it's going to be uh, a module in the EHR, uh, but there's no reason it couldn't also be a piece of a practice management system. Uh, it could also be a standalone actor that talks to the EMR, um, but that's sort of the, the role that it's playing. And then similarly on the back end, um, once the images are acquired, we want the EMR to be aware of them. Um, in the case of order-based imaging, the EMR has been aware of the order since early in the process, so when the images are ready, um, it ties them to that order. Because encounter-based images are often uh, acquired ad hoc, um, there isn't an existing order to tie them to, so we need a notification to the EMR so that it can add this new imaging data to the medical record. Um, for various um, IHE uh, reasons, we've decided to call that the result aggregator actor rather than specifically tagging it as the EMR. So coming back to our uh, doctor and patient here in the uh, emergency room, um, we can imagine in order to evaluate the patient, the doctor pulls over a, a point of care ultrasound cart. Um, and then scans the patient's wristband. So uh, that triggers a, a query, which is essentially using a DICOM work list service uh, to get the imaging context to the encounter manager. Now, this hasn't been scheduled. Um, the patient's been admitted, but there's no schedule for imaging. So the encounter manager is basically uh, collecting this metadata from what it has and from a quick query it could do if it needed to. Um, we haven't dictated how the encounter manager gets the patient and encounter information, but if it's uh, implemented as a component of the EMR, it'll essentially have that inside itself. Uh, if it's not a component of the EMR, it may be using existing profiles like PAM or PDQ, uh, the patient account management, which lets it tap into an HL7 uh, patient feed or PDQ which lets it take something like a patient ID scanned off a wristband and query for the rest of the patient's metadata. Um, and then the encounter manager also knowing, you know, where it's located and what doctors it's interacting with can help populate some of the rest of the encounter metadata. So that's all passed back to the ultrasound card, which goes ahead and creates its images, applies that metadata to the images, and then transfers them up to the image manager. Um, that's a traditional DICOM store. Uh, there are slightly different requirements since we don't have an order, but we are interested in making sure that some of the key metadata for encounter-based imaging is populated in the headers. The image manager, having received this new set of images that it wasn't expecting, um, is able to pull from the headers everything it needs to populate a notification message back to the result aggregator. And for that one, we've chosen uh, an HL7 ORU. Um, the strategy for this whole profile has been to try and stick to relatively conventional uh, technologies that are reasonably well deployed today. As an industry, we're starting to look, for example, at uh, more use of fire in the future at DICOM Web uh, for image transfers. 
um, and as that rolls out across the industry, we'll have flavors and updates of the profiles. But we felt since those weren't the baseline in typical installations today, we would stick to relatively conventional protocols. So the notify is an HL7 ORU message. Uh, it tells the EMR uh, what's the patient ID, what's the visit ID, what was the acquisition time, uh, the procedure code, the body part. And as I mentioned earlier, the accession number. So a lot of EMRs today use the accession number as the, the key tag for indexing imaging studies. And so there are a number of other profiles that let uh, an EMR launch an image viewer based on that accession number. Um, and so rather than come up with something different for encounter-based imaging, uh, we simply instructed encounter managers to create accession numbers uh, when, they're, when they get one of these imaging context queries. Those accession numbers could also be used to link to some of the other notes that are collected during an encounter. The result aggregator, you'll notice we haven't talked about an order yet. Some sites have mentioned that for various billing and data management purposes, their EMRs like to retroactively create an order associated with all imaging. Um, and so we've tried to make sure that all of the data that's in the notification gives the result aggregator, the EMR, everything it needs to create such an order if it needs one. Um, but from the point of view of the profile, uh, you don't necessarily need one. So we haven't mandated that that be done. So we initially we weren't sure sort of the, the breadth of applications of point of care ultrasound, but um, like a lot of things, once you start pulling on the thread, uh, you start finding an awful lot of stuff behind it. And so we've identified a, a number of potential applications, uh, uses for inpatient status checks, for example, to check on the state of the bladder, uh, confirm placement of needles or pick lines. Um, we already discussed the emergency room evaluation. Uh, ultra point of care ultrasound is used for a wide variety of uh, investigations there. Uh, as they evaluate the patient. Uh, it's used for procedure guidance. So there may be, for example, a biopsy that's ordered, but the imaging associated with the imaging image-guided biopsy is not ordered. So there's a lot of cases here where uh, there's no order driving the imaging, um, but imaging is done in concert with some other uh, order or procedure. So uh, a variety of procedures that are not, you know, guidable or guided by ultrasound uh, and then consultations by specialists. Again, they often do some ad hoc imaging to evaluate or characterize the condition that they're being consulted on. So for those of you that like uh, are familiar enough with IHE that you're comfortable with actor transaction diagrams, here's the uh, IHE documentation version of the uh, diagram we looked at a few moments ago. We've got an encounter manager which responds to uh, get encounter imaging context queries from a modality. Modality does store imaging to uh, image manager archive, and the image manager archive does its notify imaging results to the results aggregator. So the profile introduces three transactions, and as you're reading through in public comment, you'll see those down at the bottom of the document. And again, if uh, you know, the, the other way that we represent the use of those transactions is some of these swim lane diagrams. So this again reiterates what you saw in the, the previous diagram. You'll notice here that we've uh, shown in this example uh, grouping the encounter manager with a patient encounter consumer and grouping the result aggregator with the patient encounter supplier. Those are existing actors in IGIT infrastructure uh, profiles, and so they would use the ITI 31 transaction for patient encounter management, uh, which lets the uh, encounter manager tap into the scheduled uh, encounter metadata and demographics. So uh, when the patient arrives and they begin the encounter, as we saw earlier, you get the encounter metadata, you acquire your images, you apply the metadata, store them, and send a notification. So. Public comment is now. Um, there's, it's opened on February 21st. Um, if you look in the uh, www.ic.net slash public comment and you scroll down to the bottom, as we sometimes say, radiology is always in the basement, um, 
you'll find a section that looks like this uh, screenshot here. Um, I'm going to highlight, if you count on the page, uh, the word comment appears no less than 10 times here. So uh, we would really like to have your comments. Um, we're looking for feedback uh, in particular. Uh, it's about a 50-page document. Uh, the latter half of it is the technical details of what goes on in the transactions. Um, whether or not you're interested in digging that deep, I'd encourage you at the very least read through the concept section, which I think is X.4. Um, it kind of talks through some of the high-level uh, concepts of the profile and some of the assumptions we've made, um, and we'd like to get those validated. And importantly, the open issues. Uh, one of the purposes of public comment is so you can chime in on whether we're on the right track, and it's an opportunity for the committee when we made we, we hit some points that we weren't entirely sure on the best way to proceed, we flag them as open issues. So um, after you've read the concepts and gotten a sense of the document, please do go back to the top and go through the open issues and give us some feedback on those. Public comment is open until March 24th, so that gives you about another uh, week or two. Uh, so uh, it's not a lot of time left. Uh, if you run a few days late on submitting comments, um, we will still accept them. The other thing I'll highlight is uh, down here where you've got your submit your comments here link. Um, that'll take you to a web form. Uh, and so you can scroll down the web form to get to the places where you can input a comment and submit. And that works well if you have one or two comments to submit. If you've got a lot of input, um, you'll also see on that page a spreadsheet link. And I'd encourage you to go grab that spreadsheet. And it basically just is an easier way to enter lots of comments. Um, and once you've done that, you can then mail that into uh, radiology comments at IG.net. Um, so we're looking forward to the input. Uh, the other thing is also on the marquee, coming soon, uh, the other profile that we worked on this cycle is the Import and Display of External Priors, or IHE IDEP. Um, and this one is tackling the problem of uh, dealing with all of these cool image sharing infrastructures that we've created. Uh, there's various places, uh, particularly in the Canadian provinces, where they've set up uh, centralized image archives uh, across the province. Um, there are a lot of places through the U.S. that are now using uh, XDSI, uh, certainly in Europe, somewhat in the U.S., um, using XDSI to share images uh, between hospitals, um, and then some various proprietary and other standards used for image sharing. So that's great that we have access to the images. Um, it's a wonderful source of priors, except in order to be used easily as priors, you need some sort of an automated prefetch, and there's a fair bit of import work that has to be done so that those images can be uh, properly included so the radiologist's workflow isn't disrupted, their hanging protocols aren't disrupted. So uh, for any of you with uh, an interest in that area, stay tuned for uh, release of that profile for public comment probably in about a month or two, I think.